For the last more than half a decade, the travel industry's attention has shifted to the in-destination sector. I've talked about the size of the market in my slides, and the market has a lot of potential. So uh, I don't think anyone in this room has any doubt about how large this sector is going to be. But what I want to do today is discuss some of the bigger trends and themes that would shape the direction in which this industry is going. So let us start by talking about the online opportunity. It's no hidden fact that the TAA sector lacks other travel segments in their move to digi uh, digital channels. Let us have a look at a data point. So uh, total online booking, can we bring up the slide, please? Yeah, total online booking, including operator websites and OTAs, comprised just 17% of the total TAA market in 2019. That share has grown to 30% in 2021, mainly because of the push provided by the pandemic. If you look at just OTAs, uh, despite being the fastest growing distribution channel, they've managed to capture a very small part of the market. So there's a long way to go. What does this opportunity mean to you? Let's start with you, Tao. Well, the, the way we think about it is that there has never been a better time for online travel experiences. Um, and, and as you said, there's a couple of trends. What we see is this incredible secular trend over the last 15 years of the experience economy. So that's one. Um, that's why the experience industry has been growing faster than hotels and flights in general. On top, you have this incredible um, shift to digital where you know, there's, we, we always joke internally that the, really the biggest winner of the pandemic has been the QR code. And, and people have been really used to the ease of use and the simplicity of digital. And, and, and thirdly, you've had you know, people locked up in the rooms for, for two years, so you, it's almost like a loaded spring and people just ready to travel. So we think there's never been a better time for travel experiences and um, it's really the best time to be in this space. Okay, Luke? Yeah, well, I of course agree. Right, and I think also there's a big change, and we heard Google talking about it, and I think also other people talking about it, that you know, choosing experiences over things, over buying goods, is a trend that is really coming to life, especially in COVID, but I think we learned that, that really getting together and experience things is really kind of what we like and what we get, what we talk about, and also, you know, when we travel, when we get back, is what we talk about, so I think, you know, even if, if that we're taking a small part, shows already how big the market is and, and what we can achieve with each other. Okay. Laurence, um, you have worked in the media and telco industries earlier, and now here you are in the TAA sector. Go Not City is helping travelers get rid of those physical tickets and multiple bookings through easy-to-use passes. So, what do you have to say about the online opportunity of this sector and how would you compare it with the other sectors that you have worked in? So first, I'm very lucky because um, TAA is what we do. Um, Go City is the leader in the multi-attraction and experience passes in destinations. And I've joined from an industry where I was for 20 years where I've seen the digitalization. So I come from media and very similar to the audience here, we went through a move from physical, and remember the days of cable TV only, and people were wondering whether a Netflix would ever work, to a full digital and a full streaming opportunity. And I feel the travel industry, especially TAA sector, is just at the verge of starting that journey. Um, so what do I feel the opportunity in this digitalization? Uh, a huge opportunity. It's all about bringing the best experience to the customer, and the customer, they don't travel with their guides anymore. They don't travel with their physical heavy stuff. They travel with their phone. So we want to be mobile first, and we want to be all customer centric. Well, not obviously not forgetting the quality of the product that we support, which is the attraction and the experience themselves. OK. So coming back to something that Luke was talking about, experiences have become more important to travelers than material possessions and travelers tell stories about the experiences even long after their trip is over. But a challenge that I see here is frequency. Travel and experiences in particular are low frequency purchase. So 
other than integrating tours and activities into the booking path, what can travel companies do to make sure that their customers are engaged? Well, I think when we work with, with B2B partners, OTAs, you see a couple of things. First of all, if they integrate experiences somewhere in their booking path or after or more in destination, you see two things happening. Uh, first of all, that the cancellation rates are going down, which makes sense, right? Because you're more committed to this, to this trip and you're already looking forward to it. And the second thing is that if people have a great experience, that the organic loyalty towards the OTA or, or the travel partner is significantly increasing. And that's really interesting. Eh? And you know, I think that's why we're not only the third largest, but we're also the glue between the different um, uh, stages in travel that, that's really making the fundamental um, difference in the whole market. Do you want to add something? Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the question of frequency is an interesting one, but I think the, the bigger question is th that really anybody in the industry is asking is, is there a brand to be built in this space? Um, or is this just you know, some ancillary, whatever thing? And you know, we've been doing this for 13 years, and we very much believe that there is space for one or maybe two brands to help answer the question of what should I do? You, know, you have these brands that tell you what should I watch, where should I stay, how do I get there? And we very much believe that there is a brand to be built that answers the question, what should I do? In Paris, in Phoenix. And what we've been doing throughout the pandemic is to really invest into that delightful customer experience. I mean, we, we did this very contrary move during COVID that we retained the entire technology teams, product, design, everybody. And so have been really investing heavily into the platform while coming out of the pandemic, um, investing into brand. And what we've seen now is this incredible shift that customers are using the app um, and that we've tripled our brand awareness in some of the key markets we've been targeting. So we're seeing very good early signs that this frequency question um, is, is not really the, the key one, but it's really the can you build a brand that customers remember next time they go to you know, Vegas, next time you know, focus right in Fort Lauderdale, what can I do in Miami, that they will open our app and we see that increasing behavior shift. I fully agree. So the customer experience is key. Um, I come from an industry where NPS is normally negative. So the telco industry is like minus 30. And I'm absolutely delighted to have an NPS over 40. Um, so that's the first thing. You need to delight the customer. That's how you create that referral, that repeat purchase. And of course, you have to invest in brand. Um, so I'm very excited also to announce that tomorrow we will launch our first US campaign at Go City. Um, we decided through the pandemic that PPC and Google were not the only way to drive customer demand, but we really need to create this brand. So very excited to launch in four key cities, um, our new brand. And there's two things I can say is look for Jane and Zork. Yeah, and I think if it comes to brand, right, uh, it's also about deserving to be a brand, right? Deliver what you promise and also be there and deliver something extra so that you're really adding value in the, in the whole chain. And I think that that can really set you apart. And you know, if it comes to frequency, the question is also, what is travel, right? Is it only long haul? Or is it only your holiday? Or is it also your weekend, right? I'm traveling weekends, you know, 100, 150 miles and visit a museum or do a great tour. And I think, you know, if we're able to tap in that demand as well, then it gets also more easier to build brand because frequency increases, et cetera, and it's, it sets us apart than from only having a flight in a hotel. I think travel is more than, than only um, a, a flight in a hotel and book experience around that. So you're all talking about building a brand in this space. Uh, you, of course, have done it, but uh, considering the nature of this industry, is it uh, easy to build a brand or do you have to rely on partnerships because for the last uh, couple of months we have seen a lot of partnerships happening in this space so be it partnership of an OTA with a activity aggregator or between two different aggregators for geographical expansion and so on um, are partnerships necessary well yeah so I think it's first of all a big compliment to our industry right it's so difficult to do the plumbing and, and so a lot of, of, of OTAs are using uh, other suppliers to make sure they, they get their supply um, in hand so they can work on the, on the demand side. So I think in that sense, um, partnerships make sense. 
And I think in terms of branding, um, for us, it's, I think, a, a really great way also for our supply partners, you know, the museums and attractions, to get even more visibility through OTAs, through media partners throughout the world, where you can really help them with a mission they can do themselves, not very easy, is do marketing all over the world, right? And I think yeah. we, as TNA um, um, companies, can really add value in that, in that whole, whole chain. I love partnership. Um, I think about it as a distribution channel, really. And if you think about the content being king, the distribution channels is the throne it resides on. It's all about making it easy for our customer. And if our customer trust, get your guide or tickets, they need to find our path there. And for us, distribution and therefore partnership is important. Doesn't mean we're not investing in direct to consumer, um, and that's why we're building our brand, but, but partnership is king. But partnership is also the people you work with. Often in this industry, it's all about how we're gonna make money by making people reserve and book, but who are we what are we selling? We're selling these experiences, we're selling these attractions, so how do we make the partner the content producers as well? Um, and I do believe that that's why I was brought in. I love partnership, and I will continue to build not only partnership for distribution, but also to grow the supply and to grow the demand and bring incremental customers to, to experience and attraction owners. Okay. Yeah, I mean, partnerships is critical. Um, we, we, you know, we always say that internally, we just have really two jobs to do. One job is to make sure that we unlock all these incredible and unforgettable experiences for customers and on the other side to really simplify the digital revenue growth for our experience creators, but also for the partners. So this, has been, this, is, the great, this is going to be the greatest decade for travel experiences online. And I think a lot of travel brands, other travel brands, want to tap into this uh, as well. And so for example, this year we, we launched a great partnership with Amex. Um, we're also powering uh, Expedia. So a bunch of great partnerships just in the US, also in Europe. Um, but it really comes down to this um, how do you really simplify that digital revenue growth in experiences? Because it is a very fragmented space, tens of thousands of small mom and pop suppliers, and then of course very large operators like GoCity. Um, and how do you manage all that plumbing, that connectivity, the real-time availability? That is too hard to do for totally. uh, somebody who sells hotels and flights. It's a very different yeah. business. And, um, and that's what we're here for. So Tao, why are you not with the Octo? If you believe in standardization, um, we've together started building a, a platform for standardization yes. and bringing those five together. We'd be interested to hear why you're not on there, why you're not participating in it. Yeah, so, so Octo is, this, is the standardization in, in, in connectivity. Um, for, for those who don't know Octo, for us, we very much believe in connectivity. So we're connected to more than 200 partners um, to provide real-time availability because that, it's about the simplification so operators can focus on running great experiences and we focus on delivering a great discovery experience to consumers. Um, we've also launched this connectivity partner program where we reward some of the best connectivity systems to really encourage great availability, seamless fulfillment, and so on. Um, I think as a, as a principle of a, of a tech business, for us, it's all about being agile and innovating. And so I think Octo shows great promise and definitely something we're observing and, and we'll reevaluate uh, from time to time whether we should join it or not. Um, I think right now we're just very focused on rolling out some of the features like pricing over API, um, even more real-time availability, some major partners. So that's just taking the majority of the focus. And, and Octo is interesting and we'll definitely, uh, definitely watch it. Yeah. Uh, so the challenge now uh, or the question now is not whether we need standards but how can we make those standards the best that they can be for all stakeholders in this complex ecosystem? So what do you think, how long will it take for something like this to succeed in the tourism activity sector? Yep. Well, you know, I, I think connectivity is key, right? So, so a large part of the demand is in destination. So if you want to serve the customer in destination, you need to have last minute mobile connectivity to make sure that people can be in a moment, book something, and walk with their QR code in, right? Um, but if you, if you then think around about how fragmented it, it is and how different the products are, um, so if you want to join a helicopter flight, you need to have the weight 
and even the height, height of, the, of the people. Um, so you need to have a lot of information that needs to be structured well and that needs to be adopted in the systems and in APIs to deliver to the consumer a really consistent user experience. And I think what we are doing with, with the companies who are here on stage and in the industry is make that really happen that from a consumer perspective, it's kind of too easy to book and met, met with that, make sure that people are booking more and more frequently so that people can really experience the world at its best. Yeah, I agree. So you're talking about taking that experience to the customer and you know the frequency of booking. That reminds me a very recent news. Uber has partnered with Viator and they're sourcing content from them. So would you all be interested in something like this? So we, we love partnerships like this. And I think, you know, we're working with more than 3,000 partners worldwide, and we're continuing building that, uh, and especially in the things we are good at, and that's, you know, building great experiences around museums and attractions, and give people the best experience. So, you know, when you visit a museum with your kids, you can not only get a ticket, you can also get a private tour, or a guided, a guided tour with a small group, or even an audio guide for an eight-year-old, and an audio guide for a 10-year-old, because, you know, all these, these people have different needs, and you w really want to create the best experience for them. So I think, you know, working with all these partners can really help to open up the market and really help people to discover the world. Okay. So I think no discussion is complete without talking about Google. Nelson was uh, here on stage right before us. So um, Google, uh, last fall, uh, they launched, uh, they had added booking links on the Things to Do page. And now that system is integrated with Maps. So what you need to book an activity is right there on Maps. Um, where do you see that going? Google is always a friend of me in every industry that we look into. Um, they were a friend of me in the media space, in the music space. They're now a friend of me in the travel space. I fundamentally believe that Google will always protect its advertising revenue and that the only model they will work with on Google Things to Do is optimizing how we spend money to continue to bring demand. Okay. So, is well, Google a friend or enemy? You know, we're, we're in very close contact and regular exchange with, with the Google team. Um, I think whenever, you know, Google or, you know, Meta or any other company enters the space, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's being knighted, right? This is an industry that matters. Now's the time. It's great. Um, you know, it, we always have this phrase of, uh, you know, inch wide and mile deep. And, and the business that we're in is this inch wide. It's a category called experiences but it's a mile deep in terms of the complexity. So the, the search and discovery experience is so different than hotels. So for, because the question you ask a hotel website is, you know, I know where I'm going, I'm looking for the best price, um, in maybe a certain location. The question you ask us is much more similar to a Spotify or a Netflix, which is how should I spend the next 24, 48 hours? Very, very different question. And I think answering that question um, requires a very different toolkit and capability set that I think we have built. Um, so creating that brand awareness with the customer that this is the place to do it, and then having the search and discovery, and then the fulfillment, and the app, and so on. So I think it's a very, very different problem space. Um, and of course, as, a, as someone who, who, who runs a marketplace, I'm a, I'm a fierce believer in, in competition. And I think you know, that's definitely something that needs to be protected in general. I also wanted to ask you about a very recent development. Get Your Guide is winding down originals. Does that mean branded tours is not a good business? I think many other companies like Musement and TUI do have it. So what went wrong there? So the, the, the going on hypothesis we had with a program called Get Your Got Originals is that we have all this data that we can work very closely and share very closely with select operators and build even greater experiences. And that is something we have taken and scaled now. So we're now taking these insights and working more closely with even more operators. And we've learned that branding works. So we're actually scaling the branding. So um, the way, of course, you, know, you have to make news and, and you always write a certain way. Um, we are actually scaling what we've learned from originals and involving the program in different ways. And there's a couple of cool things also coming out early next year. OK, cool. Looking forward to that. So we're running out of time. Quick, rapid fire. You just have to choose one of the two options. We'll start from there. Experiences, Airbnb or Google? Sorry? 
experiences Airbnb or Google? Who do you bet on? Airbnb. I sense some bias there. <laughs> no ones? Airbnb. So? <laughs> Google. <laughs> Volume or margins? Sorry? Volume or margins? Volume. Both. Both. Titans or trailblazers? Titans. Trailblazers. Trailblazers. Jack Dorsey or Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Musk. Wow, Musk fans here. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in thanking our panelists, Luke, Lohans, and Tao. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Very good job. Thank you. Very well done.